Okay, we're gonna do the world record for longest time to listen to Hocus Pocus by Focus and hold uh, two toilet paper rolls. You see this? I'm holding them. All right, so yeah. So we're gonna start right now. surprised me. For someone so prolific, his life is not so different than many of us. Why did he nickname his son Google? Of all the cities in the world, why does he live in Agra, a couple miles from the Taj Mahal? And why is he the only software engineer in his entire company? In this video, we'll dive into Amit Agarwal's early life, the beginnings of his blog, and his entire plugin empire, all threaded together by one of the biggest companies in the world, Google. And Google.com is also where this story begins. I randomly came across Amit's article titled, This YouTube Video Has N Views, How the Video Title Updates Itself, in response to Tom Scott's insanely viral video. His guide discussed Google Apps Script, a relatively unknown technology that became Amit's secret sauce. It was the first of many links that piqued my curiosity, so I did what any normal person would do. I Googled it. Amit's life begins no differently than that of most other Indian families. He was born to a business middle-class family in Agra, a small city in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. You might know it as the home of the world-famous Taj Mahal. He attends St. Peter's College, an all-boys private school where, instead of computers, he's fascinated by mathematics. And when deciding what to pursue for the rest of his life, bases his decision on two factors, passion and impact. He chooses the oldest engineering institution in India, IIT Road, some 200 miles away. And it's his chance to do something bigger than just return home and join the family business. The 23 Indian Institute of Technologies are notoriously difficult to get into, where after acing multiple exams, you also have to have a sufficiently high all India rank amongst your peers to get the subjects of your choice. But Amit has no trouble and declares his major as computer science engineering, one of the most competitive courses. Just as in high school, by the end of his first year, he's consistently at the top of his class. His curiosity and enthusiasm for mathematics and science doesn't end either. And he recalls, When I got a computer, my interest was not towards coding, but on the software installation side. Today also, I'm pretty much doing the same thing. Fast forward to his senior year of college in 1998, when Amit is interning at the Maruti factory on inventory management. He remembers, We had shared emails, and with only two computers in the library, we had to wait for a long time to get a chance to work on the system or check emails. Amit didn't know it then, but he would one day become the man who disrupted the entire Google Suite of products, starting with me. When Amit graduated in 1999 with his bachelor's in computer science, he joins his first and only corporate job in Roku, an IT company in Samajagoda, Hyderabad's commercial center. Roku later became ADP. Amit spent the next five years as a software engineer on database systems. He managed clients like Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch, and then in just two years was promoted to manager. He had a career others would kill for, a comfortable life and plenty of growth opportunities, but then he gives it all up and quits. Why? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. Amit just takes a big bet. To be closer to family, Amit abandons the bustling tech scene in Hyderabad and moves back to Agra, 800 miles away. 
And this is where everything changes for him. In many ways, where Amit's real story begins. He has no portfolio because all of his work at ADP is confidential. So to market himself to all the companies around the world, especially in the United States and Europe, he creates a public-facing brand, a website on the World Wide Web. And that's how his blog, Digital Inspiration, is born. In 2004, Amit publishes his first blog post ever a review on an HP printer he's recently bought. And suddenly the article is getting views. First, it's hundreds of new visitors, and then thousands. As he continues to post anywhere from three to seven times a day, he starts to see engagement. People are returning day after day, commenting their questions and reactions. Though Amit has always hated the word influencer, and now even the word blogger. Because of all these commercials involved in it, I prefer to call the B for a technical writer, but not a blogger. That is essentially who he is. Soon, other blogs start taking note. One of the biggest ones being Daisy Pundit, a blog aggregator that would share the best snippets of the day from other sources. Imagine daily dose of internet. Your daily dose of internet. But in written form. Daisy Pundit has since shut down, but at its prime in 2005 was consistently picking up Amit's stories, giving them new audiences and a sense of legitimacy. And it was working. Digital Inspiration's viewership numbers were skyrocketing. So how do I know uh, whether the blog was picking up? The primary reason was like I could see the engagement on my blog. A year after launching, Digital Inspiration is finally making money, almost entirely through Google AdSense. Amit no longer has to call advertisers, asking them if they want to pay for some prime real estate on his website. Instead, he embeds a few lines of HTML code, and this is the beginning of a lifelong relationship with Google. He becomes an outspoken supporter of AdSense, tweeting about it, writing how-to articles, and even submitting a video to the story contest. Hi, this is Amit Agrawal, and I write a technology blog called Digital Inspiration that's monetized using Google AdSense. He doesn't end up winning, but gets an honorable mention on the official Google blog. In this video, published December 2nd, 2007, we can see a blurred out AdSense check. With the exchange rate at the time being 40 rupees to $1, 1,030,290 some rupees means Amit was clearing $25,000 a month, a mere three years after starting his blog. His NDTV interview sometime around June of 2008 confirms these numbers. I think I make a pretty decent income on the blog game. I don't know if you're looking for some specific numbers, all you can say it's like a simple figure, so it's deep by months. So. Amit is working harder than ever and putting in many more hours than he did at his corporate job. He writes about tech, but loosely, with the titles of articles often being whatever he's interested in at the time. Everything from guides to hacks to even a Google Maps interface where you could pin your location. All this while, the software engineer in Amit is clear to see. Even back Back in 2008, he offered a mobile version of his blog. After a few years of blogging, Amit realizes the world is changing. I think uh, blogging is an extremely uh, competitive uh, field. And it's getting harder and harder to attract viewers, let alone convince them to subscribe to your content. To cement his future, Amit starts making moves. Money moves. At first, he hacks together side projects just for fun, many of which live on Twitter, public, his favorite public, social media platform. I'm a huge fan of these sites as I try to catch up with updates from my Twitter and Facebook friends. He creates tall tweets, a way for you to write tweets that were more than 140 characters long before threads ever existed. The program would automatically break your tweets up and add little chapter annotations to preserve chronology. Then he goes viral with Sleeping Time, an application that could guess when famous people went to sleep by analyzing their last 1,000 public tweets. Over the years, he's also created many more Twitter add-ons, including Tweets Forever, Twitter Assistant, and various other Twitter bots. But none of these toy side projects come even close to the next line of plugins on the little bill. They'll change his life in ways he couldn't have even imagined. It all starts with a friend. He recalls, One of my friends friends was facing issues with the call booking. I thought of making the required fields autofill to solve this problem. When I released it for the public, travel agents across the country purchased it, and it's used extensively now. Amit starts building for other people just like him. He starts with mail merge, a way for you to send the same email but personalized to thousands of different people. Today, there are many third-party apps that can do this, but many people want these capabilities natively in Gmail. And this strategy of leveraging an existing platform would help differentiate Amit from his competitors. Mail Merge, along with every single plugin Amit has ever created, functions on a freemium model. The free tier has restrictions, like watermarks and usage limits, but for full access, you can subscribe and pay a yearly amount per user. The rest of the internet starts getting a taste of Amit's success, and on July 1st, 2012, all of Amit's sites get hacked. He posts on Twitter and then goes radio silent. Plenty of people speculate what happened, but no one knows for sure. Eventually, on August 2nd, 2012, Amit tweets again. 
Dear Hacker, what you did on 7-1 proved to be a blessing in disguise. July was the best ever for digital inspiration. And soon after, his sights are back up. The reference tweet is no longer active, but we can only imagine that the extra publicity and news coverage brought many more people to Amit's sites. All this while, Amit is spending zero dollars in advertising, relying instead on organic word of mouth through his blogs and YouTube channel. And it's working. Each of his products get millions of downloads and paying customers. With the gears in motion, Amit's life falls into a simple routine, much of which he walks us through in his Life in a Day video. It's in this little snapshot of Amit's life we can see him surrounded by his wife and two kids, the eldest of which he's nicknamed Google. It's hard to say why that nickname, but if Amit's past is any clue, then it must be his adoration for AdSense, Google Custom Search Engine, and Google App Scripts. He loves Google, and Google loves him. Microsoft followed suit, naming him the most valuable professional for five years in a row. Maybe it's time for Amit to nickname his youngest son, Microsoft. Over the years, Amit continues building products used by iconic companies like Airbnb, LinkedIn, Disney, and the US Embassy. While Amit worked on apps for enterprise customers, he didn't forget about social good initiatives. On May 1st, 2021, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic that had killed over 250,000 people in India, Amit created a program that would alert you by email when there were new vaccine doses available near you. The initiative garnered national news and he ended up on TV yet again. The craziest part of Amit's story is not even his success. It's the fact that he was a one-man army. Using JavaScript, React, Node, Gatsby, Docker, and the Google Cloud Platform, Amit single-handedly wrote every single line of code, carried out every customer support conversation, and marketed his company all over the internet, all while having time to answer questions on Stack Overflow, the true markings of a programming gun. When asked why he's done his entire career solo, Amit says, it's probably if I had grown a team, if I had more people working for it, um, it would have grown even more. It's still the no regrets, I guess. And that's Amit's story. The man, the myth, the legend. He did what he loved, surrounded by those who loved him. And there's no better way to end this story than in his own words. In between all the work, few cups of coffee, hush and rush, I still managed to capture a few moments. Happy memories. Thanks. play button, but I've never seen it, and neither have you, because even though I've had it for 10 months now, it's boxed, unopened, gathering dust in my closet. 
why I've never celebrated despite having 100,000 plus subscribers, why I won't be unboxing the award today, and why I feel so lost right now, well, the reasons to all these questions are connected. And by the end of this video, I'm going to do something to my award, and it'll all make sense. On June 28th, 2012 at VidCon, YouTube unveiled the first Gold Creator Award for channel surpassing 1 million subscribers. Then at the following year at VidCon 2013, they announced the Silver Award for channels with more than 100,000 subscribers. YouTube also gives out the Diamond, Custom, and Red Diamond Awards. But these are so out of reach for the average creator that they might as well not exist. When one of my favorite pair of creators, Colin and Samir, hit their biggest milestone yet on October 3rd, 2022. Yeah, this is a video I want to make for a very long time. I felt nothing but joy and excitement for them. They've worked so hard, come so close to quitting, and prevail. So then why is my award still unopened? Why don't I feel that same emotion myself? Well, to understand that, we need to go to the very beginning. On January 5th, 2022, nine months before Colin and Samir hit 1 million subscribers, I uploaded my very first video ever. So it was January 2nd. I was awkward in front of the camera, I spoke really slowly, and I enunciated every single word like my life depended on it. But it was a start, and we all start somewhere. And then I posted every week, experimenting, learning how to edit, and trying to make every video 1% better. Because if you improve 1% each day for a year, you'll end up 37 times better, which is huge. But it wasn't always this easy. Improving and staying consistent is hard. For most of those early days, I felt like an imposter, and in many ways, I still feel that today, even stronger. I researched trends, I got inspired by other creators, and I tried to add my own unique perspective. And it worked. Slowly, I started to gain traction, and then a few of my videos went viral. Wherever you are in your journey, I'm proud of you. With just a laptop, internet, and lines of code, you can be a successful software engineer too. On September 10th, 2022, I reached the coveted milestone of 100,000 subscribers, a mere seven months after posting my very first video. But it's been in the original packaging ever since. 100,000 is a ginormous number. Here's what 100 people look like. And 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000 people. That many people can fill a stadium bigger than you've ever imagined. You see, virality is a double-edged sword. On one hand, you gain thousands of subscribers overnight, and you feel like a big deal, like you've made it. But all those people, they just want to watch more content like the video they subscribe for. Which makes sense, that's why they clicked the button in the first place. So 85,000 of you who came for my most popular video, you're probably waiting for a How I Learned to Code if I can start over part two. But spoiler alert, this isn't that video. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Virality is great if you want to keep going in the direction of the video that went viral in the first place. But what if you don't know what you want to do, now or in the future? What if you wake up one day and the video you spent just a couple hours on suddenly takes off? Because that's what happened to me. And in my highly detailed YouTube plan, I never accounted for this in area. I didn't expect it to happen. So, now what do you do? Well, you bank on all the people who watch you for you. Your community. It's why the biggest streamers and creators can kind of do whatever they want because they have a loyal fan base, a following. And to be very honest, I don't feel like we have that community. And even if we do, it's definitely not 100,000 people strong. You see, my relationship with all of you is like a Venn diagram. There's all the things you want to see, and there's all the things I want to create. And the intersection right here, that's the dream. And for a long time now, I feel like I've been creating content here. And I'm trying to get closer and closer to the middle, while every so often also making videos that are here, just for myself. I know this is probably confusing because I made so many videos on tech and no one forced me to. And the reason for that is that growing on YouTube is hard enough that you should probably just do what you know best. And I enjoy tech, it's been a majority of my life. I studied it in college, I did internships, and I was a full-time software engineer. But now I want to be creative, I want to be proud of the videos I upload. I haven't been feeling either of these things lately. In my mind, there are three ways to judge success. You have vanity, money, and pride. Vanity represents numbers, views, subscribers, comments, likes, all of them. Money is well money, how much you're earning for the work you're doing and can you make a living off of it. And pride, well pride is what you feel inside. And so I think the silver play button, to me, represents this intersection right here. When you have both vanity and pride. 
which is kind of also like this intersection here. When you make content that makes you happy, but people also want to watch. Yeah. And right now, I only really have fake vanity. And I say fake because so many of my views and subscribers come from just a few videos. So right now, I'm a two-hit wonder, but we're going to change that. Now that you finally understand why I don't feel like I've earned this award, let's talk about what's next. If you're thinking about building a YouTube channel, I would first think about what do you care about in your real life? What's yeah. your actual community? How do you want to serve them? And can video just help that along? I went viral yesterday, and not for something I want, it's for something I accidentally leaked. And yesterday, I leaked how much money I make on stream through the creator dashboard. This is crazy, look at that, it's literally lagging. It's actually lagging, it's going so fast. Let me, let me see. That doesn't look good. Oh, that's, wait, I just showed my head <laughs> Here's what happened. The creator dashboard never had this spot right here, this revenue area, and they recently just added it. They didn't tell us or warn us, so I basically just leaked how much money I made that week, which is $13,168.32. Now I tried to play it off cool on stream like it didn't happen, but unfortunately, Dexterra got a hold of it, and now it has 3.5 million views in just three hours. And everybody's talking about how much money we make and how insane it is that that I'm making about $500,000 a year from Twitch. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how much money I make and how that number is completely inaccurate. It's way more. Now to just let you guys know and understand, I'm completely transparent with how much money I make because I know it's interesting for you guys to understand how much money streamers and entertainers in the space really make. And should you guys use your tier ones on us? Should you guys donate your $50 you got in your allowance? Uh, no, you should not. And I'm gonna go over on this video why. So that $13,168 is actually a lie. I make more than that in a week on Twitch for sure. That week I actually just didn't stream a lot, so it only says 13,000. The real number I make in a week on Twitch is usually anywhere between 20 to $25,000. Now, where is that money? That's about $80,000 a month that you're claiming you make just on Twitch alone. Where's that money coming from? Is it your subscribers, your tier ones, your Twitch primes? And the answer is no. A lot of my money on Twitch, despite what people believe about Twitch, that it's this terrible platform and it just steals all your money, you actually make a lot of money through one thing alone, and that's the ad revenue on Twitch. So, this is the month of August. I streamed 85 hours this month. I made about 80,000, and 42,000 of that was just ads alone, and $11,000 of that was Twitch Turbo. <laughs> Which also equates into ads. So about $54,000 out of my $80,000 I made strictly went just from ads in Twitch Turbo. Now, you're probably wondering, what is Twitch Turbo? Now, if you don't know what Twitch Turbo is, it is basically a one-stop subscription to Twitch, which then you'll never get ads on Twitch, and it basically counts as a sub to everybody, but you don't get the emotes. And it is definitely worth it if you are someone that avidly watches Twitch. I will always recommend to get Twitch Turbo. It is totally worth it. Um, and especially if you don't want to see the ads from all the creators whenever you click on the streams, get Twitch Turbo. It is a lifesaver. Um, it also does make money for the creators when they run their ads. So if you want to support creators as well, while also not getting ads everywhere you go, but not subscribing to everybody, 
definitely recommend Twitch Turbo. It is the best feature, and it is really great that Twitch added it a while ago. They're just resurfacing it lately, but it's definitely the best thing. As for the amount of... money we make. I actually don't make most of my money through subs or gifted subs or even bits and donations. Most of my money comes through ad revenue on Twitch. And you can see that right here. This month I made about $80,000 and that's $42,000 of it alone is just through ads and $11,000 is through Twitch Turbo, which adds up to about $54,000. $54,000 is a lot of money and that's where, you know, a lot of my money that I made last month comes from is just ad revenue alone so when you wonder why your streamers are constantly running ads that's the legitimate reason i make up most of my money on twitch through ads and twitch turbo alone people like to claim that twitch is this place of just you know stealing your money in 50 50 splits and they do trust me but at the same time their ad revenue is absolutely fantastic for mid to big size creators and it results in a lot more money for the for us now my CPM is also higher than average because I have a lot more audience that's in America, in Canada, so that results in a higher uh, dollar per ad I run. But I run about three to four minutes of ads an hour through those 85 hours, resulting in $54,000 in total, which is... a ton of money.
worms. Yes, yeah, so passing is a pretty good So I haven't really tried this before, so I don't really know the best strategy. But like, yeah, I think generally passing is a pretty good strategy. So this is our six.
Yeah. Now just to keep in mind, that number is also way higher because it is September. So as the year goes on more and more closer to Christmas, the amount of money you make on your ads goes up because it's the holiday season. This is when pe people are trying to push as many ads to Twitch as possible to make money. So September, October, November, and December are huge months for Twitch streamers to get their ad revenue and it skyrockets all the way till Christmas day and then once it hits January, it drops 90% because no one's trying to market in January because it is after the holiday season and it is after quarter four. People do not want to spend money. These next four months, you're going to see a lot of streamers spamming that ads because it is totally worth it and they'll make way more money. So the idea comes down to should you subscribe to the top tier streamers? The answer is yes. If you want to use your Twitch Prime, it's not like it's costing you anything and you really only watch the streamer and you don't want to get their ads, then you should subscribe or you should use your Tier 1, especially if you've watched them a lot. It totally makes sense. But if you're trying to do something where you're trying to donate to these streamers or possibly just gift subs or Tier 1 because you want to support them, um, you're, not, you're not really making a massive dent unless you're like super, super rich. I totally recommend you to just keep your money. Um, and your favorite creator probably would as well, because the truth of the matter is they make money from you through the ads. So it's not like they're not making money from you anyway. And you just don't need to do it, especially if you're penny pinching and it's not worth the 60 or $70 a year to tier one. Uh
Um, I think Twitch Prime is totally fine to top streamers. I think that you should, if you're going to subscribe to somebody, give it to a smaller creator. Give it to the smaller, mid-sized tier creators that can use that money uh, much better than we can at the top. Because we make a lot of our money, not even from Twitch. So the thing is, with a lot of these top creators, such as myself, is we make a lot of our money through sponsors. Or at least I use them. But a lot of our money doesn't even come from Twitch. So that eighty to $100,000 I make 
I would say is about 40 to 50 percent of my income. The other half is sponsors and brand deals. That's where a lot of our money comes in as well. So you can basically uh, think of the idea that it's about half of our revenue usually. And especially going into the holiday season, it's gonna be even more. Which is why I totally understand when people say that they're not gonna subscribe, never sub, never donate, is a very popular saying. And in fact, I even tweeted it today. And it actually holds value to streamers like me. You know, you don't need to subscribe to me. I am totally okay. While I appreciate your support, I don't need the money. You don't need to donate. Use and buy Twitch Turbo. I'm telling you, it is a lifesaver. But for smaller creators, it is definitely worth it to subscribe to them and donate to them if you want to support them to possibly go full time or just to help them out and watch their numbers go up. You know, that makes a lot more sense. But to bigger creators, it's just not necessary. And I don't think you need to really do it. I, mean, I don't even think, you know you don't need to do it. Now, if you're interested on the sponsorship side and how much money content creators make, there is basically a very simple formula that content creators know that you guys might not know on how much money we make per hour. And the formula is basically this. For every viewer that you have, you make about anywhere between 0.8 to $1 per viewer. So if you have 5,000 viewers and you're playing a game for two hours, you can probably assume around $4,000 to $5,000 per hour for playing that game. So yes, sponsors are a lot of money and these content creators get paid a ton for it. Some sponsors might pay a little bit less, especially if they are more exciting for the, the, the streamer, but some mobile games and other sponsors might pay even double this to make streamers excited or desire to play their game. So it really depends on the creator, but that's usually the basic standard when it comes down to sponsors. So you can basically assume that if someone gets around 2,000 viewers, they're probably gonna make a decent amount of money if they're doing a sponsor. Streaming has never been more lucrative. It is a very lucrative field, and streamers and content creators in this field make a lot of money. There's no doubt about it. You also have to realize the overhead of a streamer typically is very low. Streamers who are making $200,000, $300,000 a year, well, they're just playing games 90% of the time. So what's really their overhead? Their computer? There's not much.
going on? What? What was that? Okay, um, I'm like, it just, the screen just turned black. Oh, okay. So confused. Last play. I'm going to do a
There you go, we finished 10 times. I'm gonna drop these ones. Ready, set. 69, 20.05. There you go. One hour, nine minutes, 20.05 seconds. And listen to Hocus Pocus by Focus 10 times.